Hey guys, here's a release video. This is going to be one where we've got some uh, some tips, some a little bit of tutorials. We're going to do a build session, but you can see uh, all of the interactive elements I've been showing you all month are now available, plus some new ones. So you guys will see a bunch of new stuff. Uh, you'll see some things that you're going to need another tutorial video in order to you know understand how they work, but they're really powerful things. I tried to make stuff that you would use in any particular map in any particular game. So you're looking at some of it here, some of the special effects, really cool stuff. Um, and some new things that you haven't heard yet. You're also looking here at the magic house. This is a house that can be transformed instantly in lots of different ways to lots of different things and you know how I did it and, and other things um, you'll be learning about here uh, shortly. But uh, we also have some Greek um, architectural elements and uh, I walk you through how all of those things work. And then finally we'll end off with Zephyr's magic towers. So let's jump into the release episode. Okay, so let's walk through the uh, the traps and the interactive elements. You guys have seen me do a bunch of these in tutorials this week. There are a few that I'm still going to do tutorials on. They're relatively complicated, but they're really cool, uh, I think. Um, if you need to find them, they're in the Towns module under New Releases, under Traps, Interactions, and Effects. And let's walk through it. So you guys have seen some of the, the breakable tables. We also have breakable barrels. There's water, ball bearings, there's beer, ale. That one's an empty one. And then this one actually explodes and causes damage to anything in the immediate area. You can double click any of these and they'll, they'll go back to normal. Because of uh, to the Tagger's new feature, a wild color card feature, you can spam any number of prefabs that I've created uh, because I've created them all with the wild card feature. You can put them on as many as you want on any particular scene. That's going to be really important for some of these prefabs I'm going to show you today. So we also have the, the gallows and the gibbets. This is a modular gibbet. So if we turn on token attacher mode, we, we can see that we can actually move these pieces out or delete them entirely. It's really the, what you should be doing. And you can consolidate this down to just a few gibbets, but you can see it, it can go on stretch on in perpetuity. Uh, it does have some active tiles associated with it. Oops. Where you can hear a player or an NPC get locked in. Um, I, I'm going to show you these uh, gallows on the tutorial, but basically you can't see it here, but there's a stool that falls out from under this player and it damages them. You can click it again to reset it. Another gibbet. These are just singles. Again, because of wildcard, you can play as many of these in your uh, scenes as you want. Uh, this one is a noose that just uses a uh, a lever does the same thing as the other one that harms the character and this is a modular noose system so you can make it six long or longer or shorter and it will harm any characters that are standing in it when it goes off and you can just rotate it again or uh, flip the switch again to rotate it got a couple of manually activatable elements here here's a torch that you can turn off or on. This would be for if you want your players to be able to do things. And then you've got a couple of trap doors. This trap door won't do anything until you engage it. And then uh, there's a tile underneath it that will teleport you. That's for when you want to just create a trap door that will teleport you to another scene or another part of your scene. This trap door is levels enabled. And when you click on this, it will automatically send you down one level. This is great to use if you're using a levels enabled scene and you want just a quick way down from one, one place to the other. I showed you these in another video, but this is a perception check with proximity triggers and other things that will set it off. 
And this one is another JB2A tile. The rocks will fall and after 10 seconds they will fade out. And you can essentially use the trap again. You have to just deactivate it if you don't want to use it again. And you can find them over here, like here's the falling rocks trap. Remember, if you make any changes, you just go to prototype token, select it, and go. These are, again, set up with the wild card, so you can set up more than one of these. Over here, we've got a rotating fireplace. This actually uses the vehicles module to power these drawings here on either side. All it does right now, you see it's, there's nothing activated. It'll actually turn, that will flip this switch on this flag uh, during rotation and it'll flip it off just because um, it can, you know, wreak havoc on control tokens. But most of the work is actually being done with this fireplace. I recommend you check out or with that control token, I recommend you check out the triggers on how I set it up. You do some really cool stuff with that. Also got a landmine that is set to only randomly go off. This is another JB2A tile, 2A tile on top of another tile, and it's set to go off only 30% of the time. You can increase or decrease this depending on how many of these you want to spam into your scene, but it does use the wild card as well, so you can use as many as you like. This is the pressure plate uh, interaction. This is saved as a prefab, and once you release all the prefab pieces, you've got a... Uh, on enter and on exit thing here. I've done a whole tutorial on how to use this. So I'll let you guys watch that. Also we did all of our, uh, all of the main traps. So these are traps that again, you can put anywhere. They are now enabled with monks active tiles. You can find them all here. They make different sounds. These ones that drop into nowhere are supposed to teleport you to other parts of the map or other maps entirely. Uh, these ones on the bottom will actually damage you as you step into them. And while you can see these are the GM, it looks invisible to the player until they walk over it. There are also walls that are set in ground. So they're negative one to negative 10. So your players won't see them when they're standing around, but if they fall into it, uh, it will actually cause them to go down one level. You notice they got attacked by falling there. And there's also a reset switch. You can look it up over here just by pressing reset. And if you uh, engage it as the GM, it will reset any of these traps that are currently in the map in case you want to lay them out and test them. Remember, you can resize all of these things uh, just by resizing the, uh, the control token here. If I go to appearance, I change width to, you know, two and height to two, it would actually scale everything up uh, by double. Another one you've got is this one here. This is just a set of webs. This is a really fun one. It's called sticky webs. And it's actually a set of foreground and background tiles. Once you put them in your scene and release them, you've got foreground tiles that just help occlude and give you a nice effect of players moving under webs. It's the background tiles that actually are smart tiles. So these tiles will actually uh, ask for a strength check. You can change the DC or whether it's dexterity or something else. And if they pass, then they'll, then nothing will happen. They can keep moving through the tile. If they fail, however, they'll be restrained and webbed. So let me show you what that looks like. By the way, they're all set up to only randomly go off. So now I'm restrained and I'm webbed. If I want to release myself, you can, as the GM, select the player and then click this garbage can. It comes with the prefab and it will clear them of that issue. If you want to make it so that they only trigger it once, well, it's only tri triggerable once per token. Uh, so you can have them enter it and, uh, and only have a chance once. What's great is when you break these apart, you can copy and paste all of these webs in different ways. You can resize them. So you can really cover an enormous amount of area or long hallways or, or other odd corners and things just with, with one of these prefabs. As long as you've got some of the sticky stuff on the bottom, it will, uh, it will pick up your players and uh, enforce the rule checks. 
Next up is a really great one if you want to create maps for your players to explore. So, you know, I'm in here and, and while you're seeing these as the GM, these would be invisible to your users. So what it does is if as a player, I'm instructed to click into the room, I'll double click it. I'll roll with advantage. And it will then reveal only certain types of, uh, of discoveries here. These discoveries are rated. This is a low result, so it'll show up for a low roll. And other ones, this is a better result. And then there's a best result. And uh, what's great about this is that you can set these up in, in a way that like uh, you can have any number of these discovery zones in a scene. You just put these little tiles on top of what you like. You code the tile to do something like, you know, this one is you know, just sending a notification and giving an abacus to the player, but you can uh, have it open a journal and do all sorts of things when they discover things based on their uh, perception or investigation checks. Um, if you need to reset it, I've got a handy little lever over here. This comes as part of the prefab. And if you want your players to just roll manually and not uh, click this interactive element in the middle, you can always deactivate this and then just uh, based on their roll, activate the uh, low results, the low and medium or the low, medium and best results as well uh, yourself. You just click on that and right click it and hit the little power button there and it will uh, it will make these things uh, become visible to your players. They cannot interact with them or see them until they roll high enough. And again, it's it's available as I call it a discovery zone. You can also look up you can also look up perception or investigation and find them that way as well. The perception was identical, except that it rolls a perception check and it uses a different icon in the middle there. You can make this area as large as you want and, uh, you know, keep cutting and pasting these. You guys, again, we'll see a tutorial here soon on how to use this, uh, this discovery area. Next up in this part of the magic shop, the magic shop, of course, has been part of my set for a while. It's part of my Patreon. Um, but I'm now in this shop. Uh, you may see some glowing edges here. These are all invisible to players. If I double click on this lantern, it smashes the lantern and it lights everything on fire. There's some lighting. There's some special macros here. You can also click this button here and it will reverse everything back. It launches the douse macro. If I want to turn everything back, I do need to, uh, if I want to get rid of these clouds, I just need to delete them with FX master. This one's a little bit complicated. I'll be doing a tutorial on it. In the meantime, if you just go to broken lantern, go to biography, I have a bunch of instructions on how to set this up. Okay. Next up are our breakable pieces. This is another one where the new wildcard functionality is really important. The store is locked, but if I break it down, I can move through it. I can make my players uh, perform a skill check in order to do that. Let's say I want to get out of the building. I can smash these windows. I'll show you a tutorial on these. And let's say that that even can't get me out. I can smash the wall. These are all elements that uh, come as prefabs and they come in the uh, uh, breaking um, if you just type in breaking, you'll find them. You have colorable walls, you have wood and stone walls, you have different types of doors that will break, and then you have the breaking window. Let me just drag this out and show you. Looks like there's nothing here. In reality, there's a special window that even has a special tag to it. Notice it's incrementing here because of tagger. And there's also an invisible tile. This tile um, is an active tile and it will call out its twin. You can even right click it just to see the smashed glass there with it. These other components work the same way. So now you can have any wall be breakable. You can have, because it's colorable and it kind of fits in everywhere is how it's designed. Um, you can have any window be breakable and any door be able to be broken down. If you want to stick with this standard skills uh, check and things like that, you can just make it in here and then recode it as a prefab. I will point out that there's a macro that you need for some of these uh, advanced JB2A things. It's just multiple anchors based on, on DC. So this is in my world. You can also find it in the active tiles macros, and you can find it uh, here in the uh, utilities macros of my compendium as well. 
It's multiple anchors based on DC. That's what causes or allows contraptions like this to be able to have multiple um, uh, tiers of results. So that's uh, that's it for these. Um, hopefully you guys find some utility out of a bunch of these things. These are meant to be things that you would use in a lot of different uh, maps that you already have, even maps from other map makers. So uh, let me know how you get along with them and if you have any more ideas for sort of some common interactions. Let me walk you through the Magic House scene. First of all, you have a prefab with the Magic House. It's in the Class 1 Buildings uh, folder right underneath the main uh, Maps Town folder. Um, you can just drag it onto your map and uh, like here's the control token for this one and it will lay out in all of its levels. Once you deploy it onto your scene, you're going to, you're going to want to, and get it in the position that you want. You want to uh, release everything. So I'm opening up Token Attacher. I'm releasing all of my attachments. I'm going to close that. There's actually a second one. So this is actually a separate prefab that's attached to it. You can move it outside of your boundaries into the margins of your, uh, your scene, for example. And then you're going to want to release that one as well. This is going to let me interact with these pieces. So you see how this is a house right now. If I go to my background tiles and I activate this, it actually is going to reconfigure everything so that this becomes an empty building. Even the roof color changed. You notice it's got a specific color hex code here. And it's all these pieces are tagged with something different. And because they're tagged, it lets Monk's active tiles do things with it. So let me activate the house. It's not only changing all of the tiles, in some cases it's even changing the wall configuration. Specifically when you choose the tavern, it'll actually remove this wall. And then it's activating various lights. So I've got lights in here that are warm lights, and I've got lights in here that are ghost house lights, or go more ghostly. And so it'll actually manipulate those as well, but you can see Got a children's room up here now. I've got a master bedroom. I've got a you know basic attic, and this is where maybe the children study. My roof has gone to red. Um, but now, if I select the inn, now it becomes an inn. Now there's not a lot of furniture in here. I wanted to uh, allow you to use some of my new prefabs that let you uh, you know put some breakable furniture in place. Of course, you can put other furniture in here, so you can decorate the inn the way you want. Now this has become the kitchen for the inn. We still have this nook over here. I'll explain what some of the stuff is. And then upstairs, now I've got some uh, sleeping quarters, you know, a lot more sleeping capacity for people in general. And I've still got the same attic and I've still got the same sort of study area. Um, and by the way, I have the dungeon draft, you know, if you're a patron, you get the dungeon draft files and you can make a whole custom room using what I've already started and you can delete uh, these elements and put something else in here. Um, but while I'm here, I'm going to show you this too. If I uh, click on this, it's an overhead tile. See, I've also put multi-face tiles on here. So if I want to, I can even customize just a single room. So this room may be more appropriate as just an empty room, for example. Maybe you want to put some sleeping bags in here uh, because it's an inn. But this lets you very quickly create a surprise. So I'm in an inn, but all of a sudden I find my way into this room and it's a wizard study, or for some reason this room hasn't been used at all. So it's a way for you also to customize, you know, what's happening. It even works here with this one. So let's say that uh, instead of, a, um, here I wanted maybe a children's room. Maybe I wanted this uh, nefarious looking cultist room. You know, I'm in an inn and all of a sudden I find out that something really odd is happening. Maybe this room's not being used for some reason. There's a murder in the, the uh, person who owns this, this inn does never go in there anymore. Maybe I want it to be blank so I can put some of my own furniture or decor in there. doesn't matter what you change it to. You can always reset it back to what it's supposed to be just by coming over here. If I go back to level zero, I can read these. So maybe I want it to be the haunted version. Now you can see my lighting has changed. My walls are back down in the level below. Now I've got this, you know, whether it's haunted or dilapidated, but it's something that I can go into and have skirmishes and things like that. And of course, the very last one, just to show you, is the cultist room. 
and our cultist house. So this is a very normal downstairs. Um, but as you get upstairs, you find out that there's other things going on, right? There's cultists living in here. Um, of course, you could change the downstairs. I and mean, here's a, that wizard's place. But again, any of these are changeable. Um, here we've got someone, uh, this is actually, you can't see them very well, but there's manacles. You can have someone sort of imprisoned in here. There's some light coming in from a barred window, right? But again, I may want to change that to something else for this particular thing. And my, my roof's different color, that kind of thing. So, you know, even at the first level, I can right click this and I can change it to, you know, maybe it's this type of uh, ambiance down here. And then I can just change my lights. I can turn these, you know, toggle these like that. And now, you know, I've got this kind of downstairs. Now I wanted to show you a couple of the other features here. If your players come into this room and they can walk up to the cellar door, they can click on the cellar door and for them, uh, for the GM, it looks semi-transparent. For them, it'll be a solid door, and then it becomes this. Um, when they open the cellar door, it enables this tile here. And this tile will teleport them somewhere. I just have it teleporting them outside. You're going to want to set that to teleport them somewhere else. Ideally, you're probably teleporting them to a basement or an underground layer or something like that. I certainly have um, assets that you can use for that purpose but this is just a flexible thing for you to come in and be able to change things around. Uh, if I do open this tile up just to show you how it's configured, it is a background tile and you can see the triggers. It's gonna teleport them somewhere. You're gonna to wanna to open this up and change the teleport destination and then it'll just play that sound like you heard. The other thing that's kind of fun is this room in here. Now to you and I, this looks like there's a staircase there, but to your players it won't. So this is a background tile again. If I move it out of the way, you can see this is what it looks like to your players. It's just a, you know, a design on the floor. But if they come over here and they double click on it, that design on the floor will turn into a staircase and it'll activate this over here as well. And it'll, this one happens to teleport them out to the well. In this scene, I've got some graves, things like that, some possible inspiration. You can remove all of these things, of course, uh, and put other things in their place. Um, but this just helps you uh, maybe get something that's good, good to go out of the gate. Let's just look at the config of this really fast. Now, I've set this up so only the GM can double click it or activate it. In all reality, you probably right click it and activate it manually in case you don't want your players doing that. Of course, you can set up switches or other things that they can find in the house that can uh, set this off. I've got tons of tutorials on Monk's Active Tiles to help you do that. But essentially, it just plays that grinding sound and, and it toggles this uh, so that it's activated. And if you want to change the destination, you just click into here and you change the destination of where they're going to they're gonna go to. Again, it can be a completely other, a different scene. But these two... Um, Interactions exist regardless of which version of the Magic House that you've chosen. So I hope that gives you guys some inspiration and I hope you do get the Dungeon Draft files to uh, make your own changes and make other versions of this house, frankly, that uh, that I wouldn't have even thought of. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through the Greek um, architecture release here, guys. Uh, you're looking at a scene that was built with a bunch of the pieces. There's not actually a lot of pieces required to make this work. Um, I'm going to show you, I built them in a, like a really flexible way. You've got pillars, some, uh, you know, some components on top, but, um, because this is a magic dungeon, I can also draw pathways anywhere I want, things like that. So I'm going to walk you guys through, um, what's going on in this scene and how we, how we built it. So first I want to show you the assets that are involved in the Greek stuff. So, uh, these are components called entablatures. And if you look at Greek architecture, you'll have a pillar and then you'll have some sort of straight piece of block on top of it called an entablature. Uh, this one is at an angle, uh, like a pitch, so you can make a roof. Here's a roof that you can recolor in really any color that you want. And same thing with this one for round roofs. Uh, so that makes it very flexible. And I designed these in such a way that you can really uh, make them in a lot of different dimensions and you can stretch them, squeeze them, and they really work 
kind of really everywhere. So you'll see when we go to build one, how those work. I also built some round ones, and then I've got some stairs that can finish off or, um, or help you when you're using the magic stair function. And then these are end pieces for a stair so that you can put it on the end. Actually, we'd go this way, right, where the ground has the larger shadow. And then you can, um, you can just copy these and you can flip them. So uh, I've copied it. I'm going to look for the shorter width and do a negative 130 instead. And it flips it the other way. Uh, and then I also included some of these textures. So there's a marble texture, there's another marble texture, and then this is a, a texture for the stairs. If you want to use the Magic Dungeon components, you do have to open up Magic Dungeon, or excuse me, you have to open up Dungeon Draw and go to your themes, go to import, and then you have to import the special uh, custom theme file that I provide. Uh, I'll try to put it in the module itself, um, but it'll also be downloadable from Patreon as well. Uh, just don't do wipe existing data unless you want to. Otherwise, it will just look for the same names and it'll it'll try to merge and overwrite uh, the names that it recognizes. That way uh, I can make updates to these and you guys can benefit from those. The last thing I'll show you is uh, these, these different assets. And there's only four, but there's actually a lot of assets hidden inside of here. So this is called the Greek uh, Bowl Fountain Urn Multi. So the multi tips you off that they're are some options in here. So this is using multi-face tiles. There's a simpler basin of water. There's an empty basin. There's an urn. And then there's another um, flatter pot or something like that. And then what's going on with these is if we go to our foreground, uh, we see that this is a, a Corinthian uh, type pillar. But if we right click it, we can go and look at the other Greek pillars. This is a, uh, this is Ionic. This one is a Doric, I believe. Yeah, Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. And so um, you can just uh, set these up yourself in any way that you want, uh, which uh, whatever kind of style you're looking for. You'll notice that I did apply a token magic effects filter to uh, many of these elements. In this case, it's applied just to the top piece and it casts that nice shadow and a consistent shadow. I've done the same with, with these. These are just tiles. If you drag them out, you still have to apply that filter. I have the filter here. It's called Token Magic Drop Shadow Tall. It's the one I use most often. You can see it applied to all these elements here. So if it's going to be sitting up off the ground, you may want to apply that filter. Uh, if I go here to the brazier, I have one that's just a regular kind of in a pot. And this one, the idea is that it's up on, a, on, a, on the top of a pillar in case you like that look a little bit better. Uh, they do have lights associated with them. There's also lights attached to all of these pillars. I think it looks really nice when the lights are turned down. But you can always disable these if you don't want lights deployed, you know, lighting up every single pillar that you that you put down. Okay, so now let's jump into an example of making something. Okay, so let's go into Dungeon Draw, Theme Painter. Let's pick our Greek marble. And let's draw a simple building. We'll uh, grab the painter. I'm going to paint some stairs. Pick the marble zero, and we'll draw two squares out. Marble 90 over to our left. We'll draw, drag out some pillars. And I want my, want my pillars to be um, this kind. Copy it. Clicking into the square that I want the control token to end up. If you ever don't have the path that you're looking for, this path right here, if you have any prefabs in the scene, you can just click into them, grab the path, and then go back to your tile picker and paste it in here, and it'll take you back here. 
All right, let's put some entablature in here. Let's go to our foreground tiles. Make it just a little smaller. I'm going to give that a drop shadow, and then I'm going to configure it for levels. So, well, I'm going to put this at level 200, so it's it's above other things, generally speaking. Um, I'm going to show it through the fog, but I'm going to have it always visible. I'm going to put it 20 feet up, because that seems right. Just in case, I'll say show below, and I'll update my tile. And I'll just copy it and paste a twin there. Put this at 201. Shrink it down. Give that a drop shadow also. And I'm going to give it the same settings. Show through the fog. Always visible, 20 feet, show one below. That last setting probably isn't necessary. I'm going to hold down shift just to put it exactly where I want it. I'm going to drag a roof. I'm going to put this at I'm going to put this at 201. I'm going to change these. Set these at 300. Doesn't really matter as long as they're higher. This I want to be, let's say, a green roof. And if I hold down Shift, you drag it all the way here, but that gets kind of pixelated, so I'm going to make two identical roofs. Show through the fog. We're going to fade this one. 20. Show them below. And we're going to call it uh, Greek Roof 1, and we're going to make it its own occlusion ID. And we'll give it maybe a little drop shadow. I'm going to copy it paste its twin here. Because they have the same occlusion ID, they will hide together. So if one uh, occludes, the other one will occlude with it. I want to finish off these edges here. I'll do something here. I'll just use one of these. I also want to pay attention to where my lights are pointing. So I'm going to turn on quick edit mode. I'm going to rotate all of my lights inward. Of course, you can adjust these lights and the angles and everything else that you want to do. Now I want to draw some interior walls. Go to my interior wall tool, and we'll just do something simple here. So it's a dungeon draw function. Put a door here. Turn off quick edit mode. And let's put some components in here. Put a large brazier in this room. And let's change it to the bowl type. I'm going to set this. Uh, it should set below everything else. Let's see. You know, I'm also going to put uh, maybe a couple of pillars here. Again, just make sure that my... Turn on quick edit mode, and I'll make sure that these lights are facing the way I want. Okay, and let's a couple of urns out here. I'm 
and I just realize I just realized I placed these as foreground tiles. Those to be background tiles. That should do it. And let's draw a walkway. I like the built-in cobblestone that comes with Dungeon Draw, Door Painter. There we go. Of course, if you have artwork for Forgotten Adventures or Tom Cartos or others, you can, uh, you know, you can put in um, all sorts of things in here, like uh, statues and other things like that. You can choose to uh, block light with the entablatures and other things. Totally up to you. And maybe I want to uh, just add some ornamentation around here. Add a couple of trees. some tactical elements to make it get more interesting in case you want to have a uh, skirmish here We'll put some trees there with some planters underneath them. Wonderful. And there, we've got a, a Greek temple that we just made in just a couple of minutes. So uh, hopefully that helps you guys. Also added in this release are two new scenes for the Magic Towers prefabs that have been added. The first tower and scene is for the Alchemist's Tower. This features a winding wilderness setting to have the party make their way to the tower. And within the tower, you can see that there are several levels. Walking through it, you can hear that there is a wilderness soundtrack similar to other wilderness maps that have been created. And this is designed to give you some kind of story for your players to reach the tower. And maybe it's a quest destination or there is a particular reagent that they need to arrive at. As always, you can make this map your own by adding additional prefabs, or you can drop in the Alchemist's Tower onto any other map that you want. As we approach, again, we'll notice the tower base here. As we enter, we reach kind of an office type of setting, and there are magical circles on the ground indicating the elevator, because what wizard has time for stairs? The first floor is mainly a storage room or an area where ingredients are being prepared. You'll notice that there are some floating light fixtures. Again, because what wizard has time for matches and candles? The next level up is a workshop of sorts where the alchemist is making notes and keeping books and scrolls and working on active potions. Then on the uppermost level, is the alchemists' quarters themselves. And we can head back out into the forest. The second scene is a wizard's tower, and this has something of an astronomy type theme to it. This is another wilderness approach, this one a little more uh, well, well trodden in terms of the route to get there. And we can see that this tower is larger and has more levels, including some pretty special features here. Again, with the walkthrough, you'll notice that there is sound coming from the river. 
giving a little bit of extra immersion to your players as they make their way to this wizard, perhaps to have the wizard give them some insight into some scrying or other similar information. And again, we have an office type atmosphere and the magic circles indicate the teleportation that goes between all of the levels. We have a storage in the basement, quarters, library, a study type of situation, and a magic circle area. Exploring the basement further, it's mostly just storage items. The quarters here include bathing and clothes, everything that a wizard needs, and some more research going on. Going up, we have a pretty impressive library, and the wizard here has two desks for himself so that he can have multiple workstations set up. And we have a series of notes and astrological charts as he takes observations with his telescope. Going up to the fourth and final floor, we have something really special here. If we click on this little magic orb here, we hear a sound appear and we'll notice that we can now see a harpy that is 10 feet above our character. So what's happened here is that this wizard has a retractable roof to be able to see the skies. And if we make the lighting go to nighttime, so anywhere between 0.8 and 1 on the darkness level, we'll notice that something truly magical happens to these runes on the floor. And they begin to glow with this beautiful blue charged by the stars. Clicking on the orb again will then close the magical retractable roof, cutting off the runes from the sky and hiding the harpy. Again, these are prefabs, so you can drop these towers into any scene that you want. Now, when we are looking at this roof here, I'm going to drag in a token. And it's important that we have a token here because this switch won't actually work unless there's a token close to it. This prevents players from inadvertently um, clicking things. If we go into our drawings, how this works is you'll see that there is a hole drawing here for levels. And although it's hard to see, so I'll break the prefab apart, we have this two-part roof. The inner part is now marked as hidden, and this is just a tile that has the token magic effects for the ghostly effect applied to it. If we click the switch again, we'll hear that sound, and we will notice that when we click on the drawing configuration, it now says the level's drawing mode is none, so it's a disabled hole. And if we break these tiles apart again to where we can select that, inner one, we can see that is no longer hidden. It's hard to tell when it's hidden as a GM, but your players won't be able to see it anymore. And again, we've got to click on it with the character nearby, and if we turn it to darkness, we'll have that beautiful glow effect kick in, and that is powered by having a light that only turns on during certain darkness thresholds. And again, we've got this nice effect. It will affect your players as they run around. And if we just open this up, I first have a generic, just kind of empty colored light that gives the room some kind of light at all times. And then there is the colored light here. And you can pause if you want to see the exact settings, but we have the set to pulse and an external color burn. And the important thing here is that the darkness activation range is that 0.8 to 1. So it's only being powered by open exposure to the stars. The sun won't do. And if we want to see how this is configured, we'll go on to this magical switch. We'll notice with the tagger module, we have this set to magic switch one. And we have a series of monks active tile triggers here that are controlling this. First, we filter to see if there's a token within one square. And if not, we stop. Then we toggle the magic roof one toggle the light, and then we have a sound, and this altar is what's toggling that drawing. You might recognize this if you had seen uh, BaileyWiki's video on toggling elevation. This is basically just going to change the drawing mode from false to whole, or from whole to false. And now when we look at this again, we can see that it is clearly disabled and it has the tag for Magic Roof 1. So they all go together using the tagger module so that this is persistent if you bring it in as a prefab. You don't need to re-click on any of the tiles. It is ready to go right out of the box.
and that covers it for the first installment of the Magic Towers. So hey guys, that's it. A big release. I hope you guys have fun with everything that you've got here. Let me know if there's anything, um, as usual, with big releases like this. There's going to be some bugs and things like that. Hit me up on Discord if there's anything to, to uh, correct. But in the meantime, have fun making your apps.